Hey everyone, welcome back to another web hosting video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I will walk through the steps to add swap file to your server instance. Uh, now, what is a swap file? A swap file is a mechanism to increase your server's available memory and can safeguard your applications and services from crashing. Um, for example, if you have a light cell instance that is a uh, configured with one gig of memory and you're running services that use up all of that memory, then your application may run into out of memory exceptions and may eventually crash uh, because there is no, there is no more uh, memory to use. Uh, having a swap file allows the system to treat this file on your disk uh, as an extended memory and we'll start to move older data from your real memory over to the swap file to make the real memory available for newer data that's used by services and applications. Uh, recently, the light cell instances that use the Bitnami blueprints uh, started adding uh, or started configuring swap file uh, by default for any new instances that you create. But some of the older instances, to my knowledge, does not have a swap file configured. Um, so in this video, I will show you um, the steps to check if you have a swap file configured. And if you don't, then I'll show you how to set one up on your server instance. So without further ado, let's get started. into my Lightel dashboard. I have a couple of WordPress instances using the um, Bitnami blueprint. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is check if our system is configured with a swap file. So SSH into your server and um, at the command prompt you're going to type in sudo swap on dash dash show. If you're, after you run this command and nothing uh, comes back as a result, that means that your server does not have a swap file. Another way you can check uh, to make sure there is no swap is type in free-h. And you'll see here is that swap, zero, use zero and free zero. So when you have all three of these zeros, obviously there is no swap file. Now let me show you, um, what it looks like if you do have a swap file. So I'm going to log into this other server that I have running, which is configured with swap. So I will log here. And so we'll come here and here I'll type in the same commands, sudo swap on show. And you can see here that there is a swap file. And this is a instance that was created with a more recent version of the Bitnami blueprint where they are by default configuring swap file for certain uh, instance sizes. Um, so we could type in the other command, free dash H. And you'll see here the total swap file is 634. And currently it's using 51 megabytes of, um, of that, of that uh, swap size. So we'll close this one out. I'll go back to the server where I do not have a swap file. So now um, uh, we're going to create the swap file. So one of the, I guess, common questions uh, comes up is what should the size of your swap file be? And it's always um, a calculated uh, number based on your server instance and the configuration of your instance. Uh, including the operating system that you're using for your server. So um, I found a website that has a pretty good table uh, to go by or at least use as a guidance. And I'll link this in the accompanying post on webhostingforbeginners.net. So you can find this link and uh, uh, um, use this chart for your needs. Um, but this one is for the Ubuntu operating system. And if you'll see here, they have uh, the first column is the memory or RAM size that you have configured and then the swap size without hibernation, uh, what your swap file size should be. Um, 
again, this is uh, different for different um, operating systems and there are different calculations. So make sure that uh, you find, just Google around and find what is the best size for your needs. Okay, so the server configuration I have is one gig of uh, RAM. So according to the table, then for a one gig RAM size, my swap size should be one gig. So that's what we're going to create here. So going back to the terminal, I'm going to run the command to create the swap file. Um, so here I'm going to copy and paste these commands and the same commands will be available in the accompanying blog post on webhostingforbeginners.net. So you can use that to copy and paste to run through the same tutorial for your server instance. Um, so the command I'm going to use is called uh, F allocate. I think I'm pronouncing that right or F allocate. Uh, this is a utility that helps you work on large files on your server. Um, if you don't have this command, then um, again, Google around and, and uh, find out how to install this uh, for your system. But what we're going to do is use this command to allocate a one gig swap file at the root of my file system. So um, hit enter and this should have created the uh, file. So we can do a dash L, ls dash lh swap file and here we go. Now we will enable this swap file and the first thing to do for enabling the swap file is um, configuring the permissions for it and this file should only be readable and writable by the root user. So what we're going to do that next is change the permissions to 600, swap file, and if we see now the swap file is only, should only be read write by root. Um, the next thing we'll do is um, uh, mark this file as the swap file. So we'll do sudo mk swap swap file. Okay, so now we will enable the swap file. So sudo swap on and provide the name of the file. These commands have created our swap file. The, the problem would be is that if I reboot the server, the swap file is gone. So it, this, these steps are just temporary. So what we will do next is make the swap file permanent so that upon reboots, uh, the swap file gets created again. Um, but let's go ahead and see if the file has been created. So we'll run our command again, free dash h, free dash h. And uh, you'll see here, here's my swap file. It's one gig, nothing's been used yet. We just created it. So that's a, uh, likely not going to be used just now. Uh, we can also do sudo swap on show. And you'll see here that it's a one gig swap file size. So now the next step will be to make the swap file permanent. So what we'll do, what we have to do is modify uh, a file called fstab. So before we do that, it's an important file. So we'll make a copy of it. Um, so sudo uh, copy, uh, etsy fs tab, and um, we'll put it at etsy fs tab uh, back. And now we will open up this file in, um, in our vi editor and uh, update the file. So sudo vi etsy fs tab. And uh, here at the bottom of the file, at the end of the file, we will paste this line. And once you've done that, hit escape and save the file, colon wq. And by the way, to um, convert, uh, set the file in edit mode, I had to type in the uh, command i. So then I insert and then I did a command insert to do the paste. There we go. Um, so that's made it permanent. Um, now, <clears throat> um, the next thing we should do is uh, we can optimize the file for our server uh, configuration. 
So let's run the following command uh, to optimize it for application servers. Um, so right now, the this uh, um, property called swappiness is set at 60, but it's recommend to be, recommended to set that uh, lower. Um, and so we will set that to, um, we will set the swappiness to 10. And then uh, again, to make this change permanent, we will uh, modify a system file called sysctl.conf and at the end of this line we will or at the end of this file we will uh, insert this line so again when we're in the vi editor hit i to insert shift insert paste the um, command that i copied into the clipboard escape colon wq to write it out and that should be it this will now enable swap for your server even after reboot it will be configured and running um, let's just make sure it's still on for now let's see sudo swap on show there we go and 3-h there we go and then we can also run the command top. I think it should show up here as well. There we go. So top shows you all the processes that are running on your server. And uh, right here it says my swap file is one gig. So there you have it. These are the steps to enable swap file on your system should you not have one configured already. And hopefully, if you have a server that um, has either one gig of RAM or maybe even less, uh, or even two gigs of RAM, and you're running services that uh, may take up all of that memory, hopefully the adding a swap file should resolve uh, any out of memory issues or at least safeguard your application from crashing. Um, however, if you continue to run into issues um, or especially out of memory exceptions or errors, uh, even after having a swap file, then that just means that it's time for you to upgrade your server to uh, add more resources, either RAM or CPU, to be able to handle your application. So that's the likely step that you'll have to do for your application to run smoothly uh, on your server. Um, so I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with others. Um, if you like these type of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I have over or almost 70 video tutorials on how to set up web hosting on the LightSail platform, how to configure WordPress optimally for your needs, and many other tutorials in between. So go ahead and check out the channel if you haven't done so. Um, if you run into any issues, please note them down in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. Um, and uh, just remember that these tutorials are for guidance only. Your configuration and your unique situation may uh, be different and therefore your results may be different. So just keep that in mind um, as you go through all of this. Uh, so maybe just treat all these tutorials uh, more as inspiration rather than the uh, end-all be-all um, uh, process. Until the next video, take care.